Welcome back to Breck Buzz. Today I'm joined by Jesse Burley, our newest sustainability, well, first sustainability yeah, coordinator. Same. So, Jesse, tell us about your background, this position, kind of how all of this came to be. Sure. Um, well, as you know, the um, town of Breckenridge has the sustainable Breck plan, and so they really wanted to kind of put their uh, money where their mouth is, so right. to speak. Um, I came to the town of Breckenridge from the High Country Conservation Center. I was there since 2004. Um, and prior to that, I had gotten my master's degree in international development from the University of Denver. I was very interested in the concept of sustainable tourism. So that's how I ended up in Summit County, and I'm thrilled to be working on these issues. Yeah, so, so interesting. And, you know, you mentioned it, sustainable BRAC, and we talk about it a lot, but some people may not totally know what that means. I think sustainable is kind of a word we throw around. Can you maybe talk about what you think sustainable means and kind of what this whole program is? Sure. I think from a broad perspective, sustainability is really about, you know, having a, a quality of life today in relation to our environment and to, um, you know, healthy ways of living so that our, our future generations are, are able to experience the same thing. So mm -hmm. we're looking ahead, um, not just in the short term when my kids are older, but then their grandkids and their grandkids. And for Breckenridge, um, you know, I think that we live in a, a fairly um, small community and a small, really, space here in the, in the Blue River Valley. And because of that, we see impacts of, on our environment. We see impacts on our traffic. Um, we see impacts on our locals who live mm -hmm. here. And so the Sustainable Breck Plan was really designed to address all of those issues. Um, the main topic areas within the plan are uh, recreation and tourism, mm -hmm. local business, on the environmental side, waste reduction, water, open space, healthy forests and wildlife. And then on the social equity piece, really focusing on local workforce housing, childcare, transportation and accessibility. Yeah, so really it's, it's a whole overarching plan of what we wanna be in 20, 30 years. Right, and at the end of the day, it should become a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Like we shouldn't have to talk about sustainability, it should just be a healthy way of living for for everybody yeah and uh, that's that's ultimately the goal yeah and making sure that you know we still have snow to ski on and exactly. water to drink and all that different stuff so speak you mentioned water mm -hmm. uh, I know we just came out with um, a new water efficiency plan and we have some goals around that so tell us more about that yeah so um, just back in July, uh, the town passed a um, or adopted excuse me a water efficiency plan and that was sort of a uh, in conjunction or secondary to the state's water plan. Um, the state had never had a water plan before, but um, the fact that we've been in a prolonged and sustained drought for so long, um, we're seeing the effects of heat and wildfire, uh, it was really time to kind of start talking about the future of our water. And so for Breckenridge, as a headwaters community mm -hmm. to the Colorado River Basin, it's really important that we play our part and be good stewards of that resource. Um, and also to be able to plan for the growth in our community. Um, so we don't want to, you know, add housing and visitors and, and all of this kind of stuff without properly understanding what the impacts are to our water. Um, goals within our plan are to reduce our uh, water consumption by 10% by 2025 mm -hmm. and to um, reduce the peak demand in the summer for outdoor water use. Those mm -hmm. are the two goals. Um, over time, since about 2000, I believe, uh, we have reduced our water use per capita, so per person, um, almost 3% every year since wow. that time. So we're already doing a really good job, which is why 10% might seem a little low to people, but it's because we've been doing such a good job over time. And that's really exciting um, to see. And, you know, folks might not know the big crane out there right. <laughs> on Highway 9. Um, we're getting a new water plant. and so. One of the ways to offset future costs of, of having to build new water plants and acquire new water rights is through conservation and efficiency. Mm -hmm. So it's really just through smart growth and planning. And what do you say to people who may ask you, I want to conserve water or do my best? What are some things that they can do? Right. So um, from a household perspective, a lot of the you know water you brush your teeth with or you flush the toilet with does go back into the system. Mm -hmm. So it's really um, the, the consumptive use, the water that does not go back into the system is largely landscaping. Gotcha. And so for a, for a household, if you're just you know a family of four and you have a, a nice lawn and you water it every other day, um, taking a look and considering 
do you actually need to be doing that? What kind of landscaping do you have? What kind of um, plants and trees do you have? And d do they actually need that much water? So you can get a sprinkler or an irrigation system audit. Mm -hmm. um, this year, the town of Breckenridge participated with our um, other local communities here in Summit County um, to, to leverage a grant um, to allow for residents to get these water audits for free. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking to do that program and again next summer since we are sort of at the end of the irrigation right, se season right. now. Um, so look for that again in the early spring. But um, to be able to have a professional technical assistance, uh, an auditor come in, look at your system, make recommendations, um, and even help upgrade the system if you have leaks or mm -hmm. um, you don't have a rain sensor, or things like that. So that's, that's a good first start. Gotcha. See, we always want to make sure we give people, you know, yep. some sort of task they can do at home. And, you know, we talk about water and the town, but also energy in the town is really important. Yes. And uh, we just passed uh, some two ordinances to go into effect in 2025 and 2035 for renewable energy. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about that and what we're doing for, uh, to reach those goals. Sure. Um, it was really exciting because this is a good example of where citizens sort of empowered the council to, to take action. And so um, there was a group of citizens that came in and said, you know, we want Breckenridge to be 100% renewable energy. Mm -hmm. um, and the council, you know, had some really good um, concerns and questions about that. How are we going to get there? We don't want to say we're going to get there if we can't get there. Right. And so um, they created a task force and that group got together and sort of laid out a roadmap and said, here's how we think we're going to get there. So at the end of the day, um, the town adopted a resolution for town facilities uh, to be 100% renewable energy by 2025 mm -hmm. and community-wide by 2035. And so for us, we're really lucky here because we only have one utility provider. It's Excel right, Energy. Right. And so because of that, we're able to um, speak one-on-one -on -one with them. We're able to leverage buying power. Um, and we've been able to be an early adopter of the 100% renewable energy goals. Since then, there's been several communities that have done the same thing. Um, and because of that, Excel has partnered with us as sort of a test case. They're saying wow, Breckenridge yeah. wants to do this. How are we going to get them there? Because they're not going to be the last ones asking this question. Um, so it's been a partnership. We've supported their proposal for the Clean Energy Plan, which, as you know, just this week was adopted by the right. Colorado PUC. Um, so that will allow them over the next, um, gosh, only eight years, I think, get to 55% renewable wow, energy for their years. grid. Yeah. Um, we are we are home to two community solar gardens here in Breckenridge. That is a subscription-based uh, program where, you know, all of the solar is in one spot and you mm -hmm. can subscribe to the solar garden. And we also have several facilities, including the ice rink and the rec center that have on-site solar um, right. as well. So we're looking right now as the next phase of that to do some more on-site solar work. Um, we're looking at the opportunities for additional community solar gardens. Um, by law, we can we can leverage those in adjacent counties as well. So we're looking at all opportunities, both in Summit County and in neighboring counties. Um, and then we're also, of course, working on the energy efficiency piece. You can't right. just cover 100% renewable energy without also reducing your energy demand. And so that's been a really important concept. Um, so for residents to take action, um, we do have a residential energy efficiency program. Right. Mm -hmm. It is free to get an audit. Um, for, for qualified residents, I should say. And then for non-qualified residents, it's, a, it's based on a um, square footage of your home. Okay. So there's just some paperwork up front to qualify folks for the free one. And then after that, you get a report um, that makes some recommendations. We have some quick fixes available that, you know, energy savings now. Mm -hmm. um, those are things like swapping out LED incandescent light bulbs for LED light bulbs doing air sealing and weatherization um, projects. So that's really exciting and something that can ultimately save money mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And that's why that's why a lot of people enroll in that program. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, just like how the fire department will go and check for preventable exactly. space. And, uh, you know, we can also check the efficiency of our homes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I know the big topic we always talk about is recycling and trash, <laughs> um, but trash. waste diversion, yeah. uh, you know, is so important. And talking about trash 
is so important. Um, and, you know, we talk about waste diversion, but why does the town and the county really need to focus on diverting waste? Well, I think that we've become so accustomed to throwing stuff away. Mm -hmm. And when it goes away, we don't think about where it goes and the impacts that that has. It just no longer is sitting in our kitchen, right. stinking up our, you know, yeah. our space. So it's really important to understand that when waste goes into a landfill and it's buried, it has impacts. Mm -hmm. it, has, um, it has greenhouse gas emission impacts through methane in particular. It can have groundwater impacts mm -hmm. through uh, leachate and runoff. Um, and so, and it also has impacts in the sense that you run out of space and you have to go to a new space and right. start filling up that space. So, so it's really important to both preserve the longevity of existing landfills as well as to reduce the amount that goes into landfills from a pollution perspective mm -hmm. and, a, and a greenhouse gas perspective. Um, in addition to that, we're also throwing away money. We're throwing away resources that can be used over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that isn't logical. <laughs> and so it's really important for us to be able to capture what we can, reduce those uh, emission and pollution impacts, and then be able to reuse that material so that we're not um, going after raw materials to create brand new stuff and then just right. throw it away. So it, it's closing that, s that life cycle of the product and making sure that you know we're, we're bypassing all of the other um, impacts that landfilling has. Yeah, so it really is reduce, reuse, recycle. Absolutely. You know, and we are working on our recycling across town when it comes to um, places to recycle and contamination and signage, so I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Sure. So. Um, we are starting uh, uh, to roll out some new signage. Um, hopefully you'll see these in the, in the coming months on all the public facing trash cans and recycle cans across town. Um, we're using a signage, um, universal signage from Recycle Across America, which is a national organization that has done a lot of research across communities that show um, that standard signage, even if the materials collected by community are different, for example, we don't collect glass in right. our, in our commingled recycling. So even if those waste streams are a little different or those recycle streams are different, the signage can look the same. And so blue means recycling, orange is glass, green is food waste. And so when visitors come from all over the, the world, really, the country, um, and they see these colors and standardized signage, they recognize that a recycle bin is a recycle bin. Right. And for a long time, people were creating their own signs based on their own waste stream, which makes some sense um, because you don't want to collect stuff that you aren't accepting. Can't recycle, yeah. um, and then there's also um, branding, so different, you know. Um, haulers or private companies, for example, will want to brand with their own message. Mm -hmm. And that makes a lot of sense too. Um, but at the end of the day, there's been a lot of research that has shown that contamination can dramatically decrease when people recognize recycling signage across communities. So we're really trying to push that and, and get our signage onto the Recycle Across America um, bandwagon, if you will. Yeah, so the <laughs> people who come and may not know that we we don't recycle glass in the same container, they can see that and, right. and notice. So where are some places that people can recycle glass yes. in town? Yes, so um, just to back up real quick, glass is not accepted in our commingled recycling and the reason for that is it gets, um, it breaks and it and essentially it impregnates all the other material and it devalues it. So if you can imagine cardboard and glass being compressed together, glass breaks and then you have these shards of glass yeah. in the cardboard, it makes recycling that fiber really difficult. So there's a lot of other reasons why we don't recycle um, glass as commingled, but um, we also have an opportunity because we have a bottling company in Golden, Colorado. So our glass stays local, which is really cool. Oh, that's cool. Um, unlike a lot of other material that might get shipped to Oklahoma for processing or plastics used to go to China before China banned a lot of them. Um, so our glass stays local and that's really important to us. So separate your glass and then you can take your glass to glass depots um, located at Kingdom Park at the rec center mm -hmm. um, at the Breckenridge Grand Vacations Community Center on Harris Street and the ice rink over on Boreas Pass Road. Mm -hmm. 
And then also, of course, the free county drop center, which is on Coin Valley Road, just uh, north of CMC out there. Yeah, the Coin Valley Road one's great. Uh, Jeffrey, our town council member, always jokes that uh, that's his favorite date night with his wife. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> to go to the recycling to center. To go to the Coin Valley <laughs> recycling area and, yeah. and, you know, parse everything <laughs> out. Uh, but, you know, just as important uh, as recycling is the trash. And we are talking about a new um, program called Save As You Recycle. Mm -hmm. And uh, this would kind of be based on how much people create of waste versus how much they recycle, right? Right, absolutely. So you might have heard it in other communities described as pay as you throw. Um, but we really wanted to emphasize the recycling yes. piece <laughs> and call that out so that people know that if you recycle, um, that's the goal of the program. Um, so pay as you throw or save as you recycle is, is sort of a utility-based model. So just like you pay for the amount of energy that you use, you would pay for the amount of trash that you dispose of. So if you dispose of a lot of trash, you are paying more than somebody who disposes of less trash. Mm -hmm. And generally that makes sense. That's how we do almost everything else. Um, but the way our rate structures are currently done, um, it, First of all, there's kind of a lot of variability in there, but also you, it's just one flat rate based on your, the number of times you're serviced, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And so you could have a 32-gallon, you know, a little trash can, or you could have one of those big, huge 96-gallon ones that the bears love, <laughs> and, um, and you're paying the same amount as your neighbor. And so this provides an economic incentive to reduce the amount that you're throwing away by thinking about all the things that you could actually recycle. Yeah. If you take a pretty common waste stream um, here, you know, a, a single family home in Summit County, there's a good chance that about 50% or more of that is actually recyclable material. Wow. So that's your plastic beverage and containers and milk jugs, your cartons, your paper, your cardboard. If you think about it, we're an online retail society now, so we get a lot of stuff shipped to our house. Yeah, so the yeah. uh, amount of cardboard that a single family home has is, is growing, and that's one of the easiest things that we can recycle is cardboard. Right. And if we uh, reduce our trash, maybe we'll keep our bear friends a little bit safer. Exactly. A lot less for them to try to tear into. Yeah. And so then tying back into, you know, reducing our usage, reducing, um, we, we really do try to re reduce the use of single plastic, and I know that's one of our big goals, and we have our, our Breckenridge bag. Yes. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the history of that bag and, and kind of that sure. whole fun campaign that came Yeah, about? sure. So um, you might see some uh, material out there this year called BYO Bag, um, and it's encouraging visitors and residents to remember to bring your own bag to the grocery store when you shop or bring your own bag to the restaurant when you have takeout. Um, but that all started back um, in 2013 um, when a, a citizen group again got together as part of a, a task force to kind of come up with ways to reduce disposable bags. And that includes plastic, but also paper in Breckenridge. We did include paper within this, um, within this ordinance. So um, at the end of the day, the decision was made to charge 10 cents per disposable bag at the grocery store or any retailer that has um, those specific types mm -hmm. of bags. And um, that money goes towards the education and outreach to try and reduce the use. So right. reminding, again, people to bring their own bags. And so um, part of the discussion was, well, how do we reach out to visitors when they come? We want to make sure that they know to do the same thing. And so um, we created these really cool bags. There's been two editions now. Um, the first one was sort of a, a blue in color. The next one's sort of a sunset in color. And they are given out to, um, well, all over the place at events and through lodging mm -hmm. at retailers. You can get them at the Breck Welcome Center, the Rec Center, the Nordic Center. Um, so the idea was really that we, um, you know, try and promote Breckenridge, promote this idea of reducing disposable bags, um, and then having a, another sort of marketing platform for, for folks to to come to Breckenridge. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've had stories of places people have seen the Breck bags. They've yes. seen them in airports from far away. I've seen them at campsites, you know, on the other part of the yep. state, and it's really fun. I mean, I I always have two in my car to make sure I don't forget, and I, I have people sometimes stop me and say, wait, where did you get that? Yeah. So I think it is a really fun 
kind of marketing branding yeah. tool, like a souvenir to take home yeah. with you. So if anyone doesn't have one yet, come by my office at Town Hall and yeah. I'd be happy to hand one out to you. <laughs> and, you know, what are some of your dreams, goals, what are some developments you would like to see happen in town when it comes to sustainability? You know, I want there to be, um, the sustainable Breck plan had a lot of vision. It really kind of tied into the, at the time it was a 2030 plan. Um, and sustainability is really truly trying to get at the longevity and the long-term thinking um, in every aspect of what we do. Um, I know that we are working hard uh, with the Breck Tourism Office on a new um, tourism management plan that's going to focus on sustainability and what the future of our community looks like. I would love to see visitors and residents alike not have to talk about sustainability anymore. They just do it. Yeah. And we have a long way to go. We've taken a lot of really cool steps. Um, there's always resistance along the way, but I think that the town is doing a really good job in trying to, um, yeah, put their money where their mouth is and, and do some of these things. It's not always perfect. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate the citizen feedback. I think for me, one of the biggest things is just learning about how the community works and the way that residents and visitors think when they visit mm -hmm. um, so that I can better understand how to communicate that message. Um, as far as, you know, specific projects, um, I think I've got my hands full getting, getting us say. to 100% <laughs> yeah. renewable energy, yeah. but that's not to say that there's all these other really great ideas that are coming down the way. Um, I will say that, you know, our neighbors to the west, the town of Vail and the town of, uh, and the city of Aspen both are also leaders in this realm and so we we talk and communicate a lot and they do a lot of things that we're not doing here yet and vice versa mm -hmm. um, so i'll just continue to um, learn about how they've done things and and listen to citizen comment and try and uh, raise these issues to the top when when we're able to yeah so. and you mentioned Vale and aspen we are a part of a program i believe called compact for colorado yeah. can you share a little bit about that yeah sure the Compact for Colorado Communities um, was actually started or was a, a vision of the city of Aspen's mayor. Um, following the Paris Climate Accords, um, when almost the entire globe committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions, um, and we were sort of on a, on a track to, to make a pretty big dent out of that, um, the, the current administration had, had then pulled us back out of that global agreement. and so. The city of Aspen's mayor was very interested in continuing that at the local level and saying, mm -hmm. how can local governments take the same action that, that national governments were going to be doing? And so he created the, the Compact for Colorado Communities. And the goal of that group is to, um, to train staff at the municipal level on climate action. So if you you know, work for Open Space or the Rec Department or the Nordic Center, everyone is getting the same climate training. Um, so it's not just me as the sustainability officer for the town, it's, it's everybody. Mm -hmm. So again, it's getting at that paradigm shift, kind of that cultural norm um, for, for um, understanding sustainability and climate action. Um, so that's what the compact is. We're also going to be joining the um, Colorado Communities for Climate Action, which is a similar organization, but instead of looking internally at the local government, we are um, advocating at the state government for a better framework that allows us to um, do some of these policies at a local level. So, so exciting. Yeah. Well, lots to look forward to, and I'm sure with you at the helm, we're going to really be pushing <laughs> forward all of these initiatives. So it's really exciting to see, and thanks for joining yeah, us today, Yeah, thank Jeffy. you for letting me come on and talk about this. Well, we have for this edition of Breck Buzz. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next month.